Whether you are a new or an experienced genealogist, you should be aware of the best that FamilySearch.org has to offer. Today, it's all about Family Search and why you should be using it in your family history research. This is not a beginner's guide to genealogy. This is a user's guide to Family Search, okay? Now, before we jump into all of that, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that stuff are in the show notes below. There is a handout for this episode. We'll talk more about that at the end of the show. But first things first, before we dig into all the juicy good stuff that uh, you need to know about Family Search, if you're not already aware, membership at Family Search is free. All you need is an email address. No, you won't get sent ads. I have never gotten an ad from them. And uh, you can get notifications about some of the ancestors that you're working on, uh, but you can turn those off if you want. It is, the website is sponsored by uh, the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. You do not have to be a member of the church to use their services. And Family Search Tree is one giant collaborative tree, so everybody's working on the same tree. Therefore, everyone is trying to connect to the world tree. Other Family Search members are uh, adding information, data, records, photographs, and editing some of the same ancestors you are working on. So what I say to that is don't fight it, embrace it. They're all there with good intentions to help. For the basics on how to get started with Family Search, uh, check out the episode I did called The Inside Scoop at Family Search. In that episode, Courtney Connolly, thank you very much. She shows you how to get started with that. I will leave a link for that episode in the description box below. Now, here in this episode is the guide to Family Search. I'm going to show you some of the cool features that I like that you wanna make sure that is part of your research process. Now, I will show you my top five reasons to go to Family Search and use uh, Family Search as part of your uh, research methodology, regardless if you are on Ancestry, My Heritage, Find My Past, or you are a wiki treer, Family Search needs to be a part of your research process, and here's why. All right, one of the number one things, this is really number one on our list of five, that I like a lot about the family tree uh, at Family Search. And by the way, you just get there from the family tree, click family tree, and you're here. I like the fan chart. Now in this view, you're looking at it in seven generations, which is right, right up here. I could drop it down to six generations, five generations, four generations. I like the seven generation view. Now, what I really like is to come up here to the options tab and invert the colors. I think it's much prettier to look at. The other thing you can do is you can take a look at the other views. You've got a portrait view and a landscape view. In the landscape view, you can look at your direct ancestors. You can also invert the colors here to make it prettier. And the portrait view which really is just another way of looking at the ancestors chart. This is not a descendants chart like it is on Ancestry. Now back over here on the fan chart, one of the cool things you can do is you can change the colors of these. For example, here we're just looking at the family lines, but we could also look at birth country. And in this case, the light blue is representing the United States. The peach colored is all of my ancestors who are from Denmark. The gold color here is the UK. We've got one up here from Germany and then the white areas are unknown. So that's kind of cool in that you can just at a glance take a look at and see who, here's some British colony ancestors. We can see who is from what countries and you can see how that translates right up the lines here. So we can look at sources how many sources are there for each ancestor. You can look at stories. In my case, there aren't any stories listed here. You can look at photos. And here's an interesting one. So research helps is where they can say, okay, here's some data problems. So it looks like Sarah has a data problem. More than likely her birth date doesn't match up with you know, maybe she, this is listed her as being born before this person. So that is something we need to go look at. We also have some record hints showing up in blue, which is a, at a quick glance, we can go, oh, I've been working on this line. I need to go look at, at these record hints, right? And then we've also got research suggestions in purple. So I find the fan chart to be just absolutely helpful. So there's one other chart that we haven't looked at, and that is the descendancy 
chart. And here's the trick with that. So if I were just to hit that right now, it's just going to give my descendants. What we need to do is it's going to give the descendants of whoever's in the center. So what we need to do is to add whoever we want into the center to see their descendants. So in this case, I'm going to pull down Mary Jane Plymail into the center, and there she is. And now if I go to the descendants chart, then it gives me the descendants of Mary Jane and her spouse is named Benjamin and here are their children. Actually, we can look at the different generations. So right now it's just on one generation. Let's click it over to four. So now we can see here's Mary Jane. Here's her spouse. There's their first child, Martha Booth, second child, John Morgan Booth. John Morgan marries uh, Virginia here, and they have their first child, Benjamin, who then got married and had children. So you can see the descendants listed here. And if you look very closely, it'll say it's a spouse so that you don't get confused. And so that is the trick to getting the descendants to show for any particular ancestor is to make sure that they are in the center of the fan chart. Okay, number two. When I'm asking myself, where do I find just about anything? Whatever kind of record I'm looking for, you find it at the wiki. So you go to search and you drop down to the research wiki. Whenever I have a question, how am I going to find a marriage record in Massachusetts? First, you drill into the location. So in this case, I'm going to click the continent, and then I'm going to drop down to the United States. Now, from here, I could go straight to Massachusetts. And from here, this page gives me a ton of information about what to look for. Now, one of the things you want to pay attention to, you know, typically we read left to right right? But you want to pay attention to what's on the right over here because here we can take a look, we can drill right to the section of this page that has to do with, you know, vital records. Let's say we want to look for a marriage record. We can drill right to vital records from here and it'll jump us down to the page, the part of the page where vital records are. It'll give us a lot of information. We'll go over there in a moment, but one of the things I wanted to show you is that these state maps are, you can also drill in to the county level. So one of the things that I highly advise you to do is for whatever your research question is, remember you got something in mind. I'm looking for, you know, when and where somebody got married, right? Maybe you know what county they're in. Maybe they're in Norfolk County. And so you can drill into the county level here, but you also want to research at the state level because those records or that evidence of marriage may be listed somewhere at the state level. So just keep that in mind when, when doing this kind of research. You can also drill into online records right from here. So point being is you can drill into the county level here. You can also research the subject matter here. So let's jump over to vital records. Now from here, it gives us a ton of information. We have births, marriage, and death uh, record information. And if you look very closely, it has some of these records right here at Family Search. Now you got to keep in mind, Family Search is really priding themselves on the vital records part of research. Now here we can jump down to marriages only. Look at that. And it'll tell you if uh, that information is here or maybe it's at Ancestry. Here's an Ancestry and it gives you a little dollar sign saying it's behind the paywall at Ancestry. Here this set of records is at family search it's an index with images so we get a lot of information about where to find anything so anytime you have a question you're creating your research plan you can even use the family search wiki to help you create a research plan because it's all laid out right over here you can sit here and go okay wait a minute i need to look for here's all the things i don't have i don't have you know, the 1920 census and i don't have a marriage record for them and i don't have an obituary. Well, you can come over here and you go, okay, where am I going to find census records? We could look right here on family search. Where am I going to find the marriage records? We kind of talked about that briefly here. Where am I going to find obituaries? You could drill into the obituary section here. You can find obituary records in the area in which you are researching. Okay, number three is the records. Boy, records, records, records. Family Search has really prided themselves on having, first of all, a lot of the vital records. I have found vital records on Family Search that I have not found anywhere else. So they're kind of big on vital records, but they, they have records from everywhere. And when they don't have the records, they'll tell you where the records are 
right? So one of the things you can do, there's there's really two options for how to research records on FamilySearch. And that is to come over here and hit uh, search and drop down to records. And that's the page that we are on right now. And from here, you can drill into the location in which you are researching. Let's say, I don't know, let's go to Wyoming. And from here, we can just do a blanket research for any deceased ancestor. We can put their information in. Now, there's kind of two rules of thought here. One is less is more, and then the other is put everything in that you know. My theory is put in enough information to get a good set of results. So in this case, it would be, you know, the first and last name of a person in any event. So that would be like a birth, marriage, or death event with a place and an approximate date. It could be a year. It could be a range. See, they give you a range. So if you don't know where someone was born, you could put maybe a state that you suspect. Maybe they died in Wyoming, you know, and you want to try that as a birth place. And then an estimated range, maybe uh, an obituary or something said they died at 85 years old. So you can do the math backwards and give yourself two or three years on either side of what that date is to give you a, a rough idea and then hit search. Now, the other option, which is my favorite, is to go to the wiki and drill in that way and do the research that way. Because what's going to happen here is... You're going to get one set of results, and I believe in researching both ways, especially if you're having trouble finding what you're looking for. So research from uh, the record search here, but then also research from the wiki. Now, we've already talked about the wiki briefly. We're going to drill down to the United States. I'm going to drill down to Wyoming. And from here, again, we're at the wiki, and I know I have ancestors in Albany County, so I could drill all the way down to here. And by taking a look here at the wiki, oh, we have marriage records from 1909. Well, my guy was born in 1889, so there's not going to be a birth certificate in Albany County. But I might be able to find evidence of a birth in a death record or a marriage record or some other place. So we can sit here and look through this list of information for additional possible records. So let's jump down to vital records marriage because I don't think he's going to have any birth records specific to a birth certificate. So let's try a marriage record. And now when we get to this, to the marriage record section, we can see that Find My Past has some records. You know, wherever you might have a subscription. Family Search has some marriage records. We could search right here. How to use this collection also. So we could drill in. Let's just drill in right here. Now we have a search for this specific record set. Now if I go back, the cool part about this is I don't have to right click and open in a new tab because it did it for me. So let me also open this set of records because it fits my time frame. So we've got uh, marriages 1877 to 1920. We also have marriages 1869 to 1923. So, I mean, both of those could, either one of those might have it. So I could do a search from right here. So that's my other option is to go to the uh, research wiki and drill into the various options that you might have for different records. And quite frankly, I will go through every single possible record set and open every one of them. And then I just work the tabs. And when I'm done with the tab, I close it out. When I'm done with the tab, I close it out. And now I'm back to my original list. Okay, number four is to follow your ancestors. So let's pretend for a moment I want to follow Anchor Lawrence Jensen. Now to do so, you can click on them right from here. Or you can drill into the person view. This is what I call the mini profile and click follow. And when I click follow, I get this. You are now following this ancestor add a label. This is kind of new. I've never seen this before. So I click add a label and I can say I'm actively changing this person. I am. I've completed this. This is the end of the line. I'm interested in this. I'm going to say researching. And I could put a note in here if I want, and then I hit save the label. So I have now labeled this person as that I am researching him. Now, if you'll notice, this took me over to this tab. And when I'm here, I can see everyone I am following. So before, remember, I was 
at the tree. Here I'm at the tree and anytime I want to see anyone that I am following I can click the following tab here and it gives me a list of all the ancestors that I am following and that way I can get notifications of when changes happen. If you'll notice, remember this is a collaborative tree. So here someone has been changing some of the information about Susanna Yeomans. They may be contributing some information. Here they uh, deleted a child that they didn't think was uh, a attached to this person. So you can scroll down and you can kind of take a look at the different people who are actually, you know, collaborating even though you may have not talked to them yet, they are working on the same people and they may have uh, made some adjustments to the collaborative tree. And you can actually reach out and, and click through and uh, talk to this person, send them a message. So that's one of my favorite things to do is to follow my ancestors and kind of keep an eye on, on when people have added new things because a lot of times you know, the people that are making these changes are, you know, really kind of digging their fingers into the pie and, and seeing what's going on. So they may have added some records or some photographs or something that I really want to see. Okay, number five is this, and it might be something you don't even know about. And I've talked briefly about this in the past, but let's talk about this. So number five is to search genealogies. Now, wait a minute. What am I talking about? So these genealogies that are over here, are older genealogies that people have submitted and in some cases they're newer like for example if you were to take a GEDCOM file which if you're not familiar with the GEDCOM file it's where you can download your family tree from another service using a GEDCOM transfer protocol and then upload it somewhere else well you can upload your tree to family search here I've done another episode on that we'll leave you a link in the description box for that but you can search those genealogies because searching genealogies here does not necessarily mean you're searching the world collaborative tree not everything in those genealogies are on the world collaborative tree for real like think about that for a moment it could be you're searching the you know the typical record search or the family tree but if you're not searching the genealogies you may be missing out on some information because some of that information is older. GEDCOM file uploads, I've done it myself. And quite frankly, at, you know, I've got 3,000 some people in my tree. I've lost track. I don't even know how many people I have in my tree. And I've uploaded that GEDCOM file here for people to search. But it doesn't mean that it's on the world collaborative tree. Because I didn't take the time to put all 3,500 or whatever they are, the number of people that are in my GEDCOM file I did not attach them to every person in the World Collaborative Tree because remember, the World Collaborative Tree is trying to keep one profile per ancestor. They don't want duplicates because otherwise you'd have tons of duplicates out there, right? So these genealogies might have the answer for your research question, at least from what somebody had researched in the past. They could be long dead and gone, but had uploaded their tree here and it is now available for you to research my goodness what an idea why didn't i think of that hey there's more information uh with links to some of that information that i talked about in the description box below the video here on the youtube channel and if you want the handouts the handouts there's a couple options so one option is you can purchase them individually over at genealogytv.org or you can join the channel membership here on the youtube channel uh, click the join button and join at the information access level gets you the handouts and early release. If you just want to help support Genealogy TV, you can do so by uh, clicking the join button and join at the support level. Or, you know, you can go over to genealogytv.org and donate on the handouts tab. All right. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. There are more videos on the screen for you now for your genealogical journey.